Hello, and welcome to our presentation about batch processing in action. So myself and my friend, Hugh Mertona, uh, we're gonna present this batch processing because we do believe that batch processing is still very relevant. It's not one of the hypes technology, but many companies still have batch processing, um, any kind of batch processing uh, in their day-to-day. -day. And batch processing can be many different things, it can be like a file that you need to process every day, a report that you need to generate every month. So during this presentation, we want to introduce you to the Spring Batch. And at the end of the presentation, we hope that you will be able to understand what Spring Batch is, what it can provide to you, the benefits, and how you can create a batch job yourself. So let's start defining what Spring Batch is. So Spring Batch is a lightweight, comprehensive batch framework designed to enable the development of robust batch applications vital for the daily application operations of enterprise systems, right? And let's also define what Spring Batch is not, because it's important also to define what Spring Batch is not. So Spring Batch is not a scheduler, okay? So it's important if you're looking for a scheduler, Spring Batch is not your tool to go. So there are many other uh, uh, solutions in the market. You can have the job run. Um, so job runner, so there, there are other, so if you're looking specifically for, for a scheduler, Spring Batch is not your tool, all right? Let's move on. So a little bit of myself, my name is Rodrigo Graciano. I'm a professional with 10, 15 plus years uh, working with Java. I'm a principal software engineer in a company in New York. I'm one of the leaders of the New York Java user group, the NY Java SIG. Uh, and you can reach out to me on my blog where I, uh, every week I put a, um, a suggestion of articles related to the Java JV JVM, so it's graciano.dev, or on Twitter at Rodrigo Graciano. Okay, now it's my turn to say hello. Hi, Rodrigo. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Hilmer Chona. I'm working with Java and cloud technology for over 10 years now. I uh, live in Colombia, uh, also, so, uh, also I am a Java champion and part of the Medellin Java user group. If you want to listen or follow me, uh, that is my Twitter handle in the last position of this slide. Okay. All right, so these are a couple of the words that we're gonna be uh, talking today. Um, I will leave it here so a couple of seconds so you can, you can uh, get familiar with that. So we're gonna be talking about job, guard steps, processes, uh, type of files that we can process, type, type not only files, databases, and many other things that we're gonna be seeing today. And it's important for you to think if you have today, if you have any batch processing today um, and how we are doing it. So do you have like a daily report? Do you have um, some tool, I don't know, you need to extract data from your database and send uh, on a text file. So how are you doing that? How you're monitoring this process? So, the, so during today's presentation, we're gonna introduce you to Spring Batch and we're gonna let, and probably at the end of the presentation, we hope that you understand how you can benefit from many of the things that Spring Batch provides, many tools out of the box for you. Okay, let's start with the basics. Uh, during, during this uh, presentation, we are going to present some demos that we believe that we apply code or code, code is the easy way to, for developer to understand uh, uh, if or later uh, new thing. Okay, let's move to the demo and then I'll be back to the slide, okay. Here we have our, our, our code. The code is, is available in a repository in the, in, the, in the final of this presentation. We're going to, to share with you the slide. It's running, it's a, the Spring Batch application. I'm going to run the job to see what happened. In this case, the, we see this has, a, has only a, a simple task. We get, 
this result file and we are going to read from here and create the new file. It's, a, it's, it's just a copy and small demo. This is only for the, the component. Okay, let's go back to the slide. Okay, in this process we have some elements that are part of the, of the bash framework. We have job, we have a step, we have a repository, and we also have the room process. Okay, this is a architecture and simplified one. Later we are going to see um, this architecture, but this is the architecture that was run in the first demo. So I say we have a job repository. Your repository is an element or component provided by the framework. It's, it's getting out of the bus and is right here for us. We don't, we don't need to do so many things to use the repository. Later, on, we're going to talk about more about this. We have the job, launch, job launcher. It's a, it's a part of the code that is in charge of trigger or run or start the execution. Then we have jobs. The job can have more than one step and we have reader and writer. Let's go try to, the, to see what are those elements uh, implemented in the code. Okay, we have, let's start first with the job, the, let's start with the job. Here we have our, our job. In this case, we call a simple job. Uh, then we say the job can have one or more steps. to have a, a, at least one. In this case, we have the step. And let's check how the step uh, is defined. The step has a reader and a writer. And let's check the code about the reader. The reader, in this case, the reader is reading from a test file. And the writer is diving to a new file. So this part, as you can see, is with this class, the, the whole process is done. Okay, let's move to there. Okay, as I said, the your repository uh, came out of the box with the framework. Uh, it's a, uh, it provides some tables that are created by the framework that are using to know the current status, the current state of uh, execution. In this case, the your repository create this table and you can use the table to, to see the status. Also the, the framework use the, the information of the data that is persisted in those table to control the process and maybe to retry or to do different things. In, um, in, in a new demo or later, we are going to dip into the, this table. Um, okay, but how the, the, your repo, the, the repository is, is provided? or how the, the, those elements are, are provided in the code. It's just simple, it's only adding this annotation, enable by processing. Let me, I show you pretty simple the code. is. Okay. With this annotation, we have, a, we, are, we, we are enable the repository in the job processes. Okay, how can you tell, tell us about the elements that are part of the, or are enabled when we use this annotation. Perfect, so um, so just to give a step back, there are two main ways to, that you can uh, configure your job, right? your, your, application, your application and your jobs. So you can use a XML annotations or, or you can use XML or annotations, okay? Um, when you're using this annotation, enable batch processing, the framework will provide to you out of the box, all these beings, the job repository, the job launcher, job registry, job explorer, a transaction manager, builder factory, a job builder factory, step builder factory. If you're using XML, you will have to define these beings yourself, okay? Um, and of course, to have a job repository, you need to have a data source configured as well. Uh, but keep in mind, don't use both of them because if you're using both of them, if you define your bean um, in XML and you add the at enable batch processing annotation, you may end up with two different job repositories uh, in, your, in your application and your application may end up with a status, uh, some problematic status. So don't do that, use one 
or the other. Okay. And as we are saying, so um, there are also two ways that you can start your application. Use a command line uh, job runner or within a web container. As Humor showed before, uh, we're using here within a web container. So we have a Spring Boot application running. Uh, it's listening on port 80. And it's important as well to understand what are the difference here between uh, a common job, uh, a command line and a web container. Um, the job, uh, basically the job, when you start your Spring Boot application, you're gonna have a synchronous uh, job launcher. Okay, so that means you, you call, suppose for, I don't know, a command line, you start the application, is gonna you build up your uh, your job. Is gonna execute your job. And when your job finishes, it returns to the job launcher to give the result. That's fine. That works pretty fine. But what's the problem here? Okay. So if you have a web application, what's the problem of making a request to a synchronous uh, task? The problem, one of the problems is that if you're running on a web container, you may your job may run for, I don't know, 30 seconds, you can have a job, but may, suppose you have a long, long uh, duration job, you'll be there uh, waiting for your response. So it, it's not a best practice, like, I don't know, to do a, a REST call to an API and be waiting for, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes to get a response back. So there are ways that we can configure our application to use an, a sync job launcher. And it's very simple to do it. So if we go to the job controller, as I said, the Spring Batch give us uh, out of the box, the job launcher. And that's what we've been using so far, but also to configure, to create a, a sync job launcher is very easy. So here we have defined our own async job launcher. So it's pretty much everything is the same as a regular job launcher. But here, as you can see, when the task executor, we are we are defining here a thread pull task executor, which is async. So now what happens is once we call the application, it's gonna run on a different thread and it's gonna give the result back, just switching from the sync job launcher to the async job launcher. Now it's pretty much we are running our tasks uh, separately. So it's important to understand uh, this concept and when you should use a sync versus a async job launcher. Yeah. You can leave the sync or a sync, both are gonna work. Yep. I'm not listening to you, you're on mute, go back. Still mute. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm back, okay. Okay, I say that I'm going to introduce two, two new elements, processor and chunks. Uh, in our first demo, we have uh, this sequence, we have, uh, we read and we write. But now we are going to introduce, sometimes we need to process the data read before writing. So that's the, and uh, that, that we need a new element to do this. Okay, this is the new architecture. So is this, this is probably the same, but in this step we are introducing a new element, the processor. Uh, what is the processor used for? The processor can be used for transforming the data, filtering, or perform some validation. For example, in the case that we need to transform it, suppose that we have the, the information separated by commas, and we need to divide or split to in a database table or something like that, we can use the transformation. Or for example, filtering such as uh, we don't want to write, we, we, we receive a million of record, but we want to, to return only, to write only the element or the, or the data that was generated the, the 
the current day. So we can use this element. Okay, let's go to see now the sequence. We have we read, process, and write. And I'm going to introduce another element that is called chunk. So in this case, we can sometimes uh, read is the, the read process could be uh, cheaper, but the writing could be expensive. So for the for for to improve this part, we the, the chunk pro, we can use chunk to read several record, process those record, and when we the one chunk uh, complete the number of elements that we want to process uh, at the same time or in batch, uh, we can uh, write uh, uh, those ele the elements that we're processing. Okay, I'm going to show you the code. Let's uh, or let me go to move to the new day. Okay. Let me here. And now we have another. I'm going to close this. I don't need this. And here. we have another 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 job process. In this case, we are going to read the same file, but we are going to write in a database. So the 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 First, we are, uh, we, are, we are adding the processor. Let's see how the processor looks like. We, uh, for this case, we create a new class that uh, is using to generate the processor beam. And the processor get record by record, uh, one by one, and it start to process uh, in prefer validation or apply business logic. Finally, the, pro the processor is used for apply the business rule or business validation or the business validation or the we need to apply to the data. For this case, we are going to write, we are we want to write only the fair, the top thread, top thread, top three in the uh, in the in uh, the three position in the race. And also we want to uppercase the name. Let's let's go back to the file. To see the file, the file is they have the top ten of one race. And it could be a Formula One or NASCAR, one of their race. And we want to write only the top three. Let me close this. I want to close this too. And to define the chunk is easier. We can say that we. It's just to add here the, the number. In this case, we are going to say two because it's only, it only three records. I'm going to run the application. Let's start the uh, subprime running. It's running. It's... The other part of the demo is the same. Yeah, I think for this case, you can go to the processor and, um, and just comment out for now this this exception for now on line 29. Yep. Line 20. Okay. Yeah, because this is for, yep. for their... Yeah. Okay, let's restart. Perfect. Yeah, this is for the, the second day. Let me easier there. The execution. Okay, it's running. Uh, wait, it's, 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 it's going. As I said, the let's 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 see in while the. The reader, wait, the reader. This is the reader. Okay. And while the application is is starting, it's important to mention uh, this concept of the chunk. And as mentioned, as Humer mentioned, it's in how many number of elements the the process will be committed. So as now we're writing to the database, instead of committing every one object, every one element, that's not very uh, 
that's not the best performance. You, we can do it in chunks. So of course, here is a demo. We're setting this number to two, but in a real application, probably this, this chunk will be you know, hundreds, thousands of elements at a time. Uh, the, 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 the job was secured, so now let's go to verify. In this case, we are going to use a in-memory database. Uh, the database has the table. Do you remember uh, we talked about the, the repository? This is the table that are created uh, by the framework. And this is our table of the business table that to, to save or to write the data. Let's go through the data. You can see we have only the position from one to three. And as you remember, maybe the, uh, the name was, uh, was an uppercase. So now we write the upper cases. And let's talk about a little more about this table. This is the execution table. I say this is provided by the, by the bash framework. And here we can see, we can get information about the execution. Later I'm going to go back to this table to talk more about that. Okay. So, we introduce reader, we introduce writer, and also we are going to introduce another element called Tuslet. Tuslet. And Rodrigo, what can you tell us more about reader and writer? Okay, so as we saw here in, in the examples, we saw some of the, the readers and writers that are available. So the first uh, demo that Humor presented, we were reading from a database, reading from a file, writing to a file. The second one, we were reading from a file and writing to the database. And those are some of the templates that are available out of the box uh, from Spring Batch for you to use. But there are many other templates that are available for you to use. And let's start taking a look at, at those. So let's start with the readers. All right. So uh, Spring Batch provide out of the box, all those readers for you. So database, we can work with JDBC, Mongo, Neo4j, Hibernate. So it has templates for flat files so they can be delimited, you know, comma separated, pipe separated, whatever, delimited, a fixed length files, XML, JSON, and also works with some mess messaging solutions, JMS, Kafka, AMQP, and multi-file. So multi-file is a special type uh, of readers in the next one. And it's really interesting uh, use case and uh, you, can, you can see some value in that. So suppose you have, uh, you receive a file from somewhere and it's zipped. It, and when you unzip this file, suppose you have a hundred files inside. All the files, they have the same format and you need to apply the same business logic to all of them. Um, so given what we saw so far, you would have to create one job for each one of these files to, to process or run the job or one of the files that we're processing. But using the multi-file reader, we can read multiple files <laughs> in a single step, as long as the file have the same format. So it works with XML, JSON, and flat files. So again, instead of reading one file, at a time for one job, you can, suppose you have a hundred files, you're gonna get the data from a hundred files in a single job and run them. So, all right, so let's see how that can be done. If you see, we have here our multi-file job. It's really similar to what we have seen before, uh, but we we defined there on line 50, Three, we're defining the multi-resource multi -resource item reader, okay? Uh, and we have our input resources. They are defined on the top of our application. It's pretty much the class path. So we're gonna get everything that's race, star, CSV from our application. So in this case, Humor saw, showed the demo before one file. So instead of now we're reading from two files and we're gonna write the results uh, what we're writing, the result here is to the database, JDBC batch item reader. So we're gonna read 
from the two files and we're gonna insert in our database. So it's pretty much similar to what we've done before. Uh, the files, I think you can show the files that they have exactly the same format. So that's important uh, to, to mention again, to emphasize, because if the files have different formats, the multi-item resource, multi-file is not uh, your solution. Okay, so here the files have the same uh, formats, so we can run them in a, in a single step as well. Multi jump, yep. So there you go, execute it. And if we go to the database, to just to check that everything worked. So clear, yep. Let's see, so we already have the top three before. So now you can see another 20 records were insert. And that's how you can use the multi multi-file uh, item reader. Okay, so the same way Spring Batch provides a lot of readers, it also provides a bunch of writers for you to use out of the box. So the same way, they're very similar database, the same things from flat files, XML, JSON, JMS, Kafka, the multi-file writer as well. And email, you can also read the data and send an email message. So they're very similar. And one more thing to mention, the test list, because everything we've seen so far was a step that's composed of reads, optional process, and writes, okay? But what if you have one task that you need to do before running your job? A single operation that doesn't involve reading and writing, suppose, you need to run a DB query to see, I don't know, if it's time to, if some condition were satisfied. Uh, if you need to copy files between, I don't know, S3 to a local folder to process, if you need to zip or unzip files before you can run uh, your job. So in this case, the traditional reads process, right, is not the best option. So the other way we can have our step instead of be a chunk oriented step like we've seen, we can use a testlet that's right for that. We need to perform a one-time operation and no need, no, it's not a read write. So it's a one-time operation that you're gonna run like cop files, zip and zip, and that's the perfect use case for testlets. Okay, so, so far we have seen the basics of Spring Batch. So it's with what we demo so far, you could pretty much uh, build your first batch application. Um, you can read from files, write your files, write the database, read from the database. You can you learn how to use a processor also to process the files. But what if you need to add more to your jobs? What else is Spring Batch providers? So one of the things that also provides is are, are the listeners. So listeners is pretty much as, as I mentioned. So once one action completes or uh, there's a trigger point for one of those actions, you're gonna be able to implement some business logic on, on top of that. So we have listeners for different scenarios here for the job execution. So the job, so when the job starts, when the job finishes, you have for step execution, uh, remember that we have demonstrated so far a single step for each job, but a job can have multiple steps. So you can have for when the step starts, when it ends, the same way for when you're reading, writing, for your chunk, for your processor, and when you're skipping items, um, you have listeners defined for all of them. Okay, but let's move on. Let's give now a real example how you can use a job listener. So suppose you have to run your job and then if something happens uh, with your job at the end of the process of your job, something uh, happens, if the job fails, you want to notify a group of users. So a way to do that is implementing a job, a job execution listener. So the job execution listener, listener, you have two methods to implement the before job, which is gonna run when the job is starting and when the job completed. So here, when the job completes basic on its status, 
we are defined. So if it fail, we're gonna send an alert. It's important that this status is part of the batch framework. So when the job complete, the job has a status, usually will be like completed, fail, um, are the, the most common. So if it fails, then this job execution would be uh, triggered. Um, it's also um, a good practice. Like if you have suppose a hundred jobs, right? So you don't want to implement this same logic across multiple jobs. So what you can do is you can define a parent job, and you can say that all of our, your and your in your parent job you're gonna say that implement the job execution listeners like we're doing here, and then all your children they're gonna uh, uh, have this parent's job and they're gonna inherit this. Um, these uh, methods out of the box uh, without needing to, to be implemented in each one of the children. Okay. All right, so besides the job listeners, here are the kind of uh, the step listeners that we have. So the step execution, they can happen before or after the step. For item readers and write item writer, so before and after reads and when an error happened during the reads. For the same way for the right before and after right and when a, a right error happens. More the chunk listeners, as we saw, we have defined our chunk in the example for in two elements. So we can also define listeners before, after, and after an error happened in your chunk. We can define for the processor before, after, and when error and skip listeners so you can implement we're going to see more on the skip later so when on skip and read in process in write so all of that we have also listeners um, out of the box for you okay so now so far we have seen uh, the way that that we define our flow was sequential okay so we have, you run one step, you run the second step, you run the third step, okay? So let, let's suppose you have a job that's uh, first step, you read a file, write to the database. Second step, you reach from the database and then you join with another table and write to a file. So multiple steps in this job. So as we have seen so far, the job they would run sequentially so you run step one once step one completes we run we move to step two once step two completes we move to step three and that's the most traditional way that to to run a job but that's the, not the only way that's available for you to run we've seen that there are other other ways we can run our our batch okay so we can see also, so we saw sequential. Now we're gonna see in conditional jobs. So how uh, conditional and decider, they're very similar. Let's move on. So conditional, as, as it says, is based on a condition. So we're gonna run step one and depending on a certain condition, we're gonna run or step two or step three. Uh, they are similar in the sense that it's there's always this if else uh, way to work, but the conditional, it's gonna be based on the exit status of the job, okay? So if the job, suppose you say the job failed, go to step two, job a step succeeded, go to step three. While the decider, you can have a little bit more flexibility. Suppose you can have a business logic to implement, suppose, oh, if today is uh, an odd day, go to step two, otherwise go to step three. So you can implement this business logic uh, to define how your flow and not only based on the exit status of the step. And the last one we're gonna see is the split. And the split, you can divide your steps uh, to run in parallel. So suppose here we are running step one, 
and step three in parallel. But once step one completes, we run step two. Once step two completes and step three completes, we run step three. So here, instead of having our traditional one, two, three, four, suppose the tree is completely independent, so it does not depend on anything related to step one and two. So you can process step three in parallel. So step three will be running at the same time that steps one or two and two are running. And once they complete it, they're gonna execute step four. So that's another way that you can run your, uh, your job. So sequentially, uh, using a decider or a split. That's all the flows you have for Spring Batch. Okay, so now a little bit more beyond the basics is how we can scale and do parallel processing using Spring Batch. Uh, so there are different ways to do it. And we've seen some of them already. So the multi-threaded using the async executor. So we saw that when you're using the async, uh, async job launcher, uh, we're using an async executor, the thread pool with executor. So it's a way that you can uh, run multi-threading here using Spring Batch. Uh, the other way is using split, like you saw here on the last flow, the split flow. So we can run steps uh, at the same time concurrently. But we also have the remote chunking or partitioning. They are very similar, but on the chunking, uh, the data is processed. So you have like uh, one manager and workers. And during the chunk, the real data is sent uh, to the workers. So not a reference of the data. So it's way more IO intensive. Uh, while the partitioning, the data in chunks are brought, the, the data is local to, to workers. Um, so it's just a different way uh, to, to process the data uh, in parallel. Moving on. And now we're gonna see more functionalities that Spring Batch gives to you. Like how can we start a job and what happens if a failure uh, occurs during during execution and how we can retry uh, to run to run a job. Okay, so this start. So it, so far with what we have seen, uh, if an error happened during our process, uh, it's gonna roll back. Okay, and and your job is gonna end with um, a fail status. Okay. Uh, but if you if you're okay with some of the errors or um, you don't want to abort your execution, there are ways to do that, um, and, and we can and we're gonna see some of them. Um, another thing important to mention is, is Spring Batch. If you try to run the job again, Spring Batch will try not to process the same step twice. So if if step one completed and step two did not did not complete it, it's not gonna run step one again. Okay. So, but if step one is something that you need to run every time because I don't know you do some database cleanup that you need to do, uh, you can tell that step one has a start limit of two, three, four. So you define a number here. So it means it means that step run one is gonna be executed n times. And, and um, as much time as, as needed. And they need to be together with this flag allow started with completed to true, okay? Moving on, other, other techniques. So we have the fault tolerance that can say that our application will be okay uh, if some error happen. And we can say also that we can skip if some exception happen. So, uh, I don't know, you have some kind of exceptional that, exception that uh, it's not a problem for you. You can say, all right, if this exception happened, you can ignore this record and you can keep uh, your execution. And you can also define a limit on how many times this exception can happen. So of course, oh, you are okay if that happened one time, but if it happens five times, 
I don't know, that's maybe too much. So you can, you, you find, you define your skip limit with five. And then when you get after five, if you have an exception, that's it, it's gonna uh, get out of the job with, with AO status. So we can define the limit. And also the same way you have the skip, you have the no skip. So you can say that no skip for some exception and do not roll back for some exception. That's also uh, for your step, you can, you can define those, those flags. More. And, and again, you can use the more the, the retry function. You can say that you can retry with some exception uh, when some exception happened up to a certain limit. And this is when, right, when is that useful? Um, suppose you, I don't know, you're gonna get data from some other service. Um, I don't know, you need to send an email, but the server is down. So you can say, I don't know, retry because this error uh, can happen, but they are not expected to last a long period of time. So you can retry uh, after, after some time. So th those are useful in this kind of scenarios. Yep. Right, so let's see how we can do that in our codes. That's cool. So you have... Okay, let's go to the, let's stand to the last demo of this session. Okay, we are IntelliJ and we are going to use the same job that we used to read from the file and save in a database the position of arrays. Okay, I, to say time we have here, here we have the, the element that we needed. I'm going to uncomment in some second so, so you can see, I'm going to paste it, it's better. So we are going to define that we want our process is fault tolerant. Also, we want to, to skip with a limit of three, and we want to retry twice. I mean, the, after two I, as after two retry, the process will, will fail. Uh, I mean, we, we, we have a tolerance, tolerance of three. And also, let's go on to add an, a listener. The listener is used only for logging process. Logging, only for logging. Um, I think I need to import the class. Okay. So as we can see, the changes is, it just add, add another property with some values. And now our step is full tolerant, full tolerant. Okay. And let's go to the processor. Remember I, Rodrigo, remember me to comment this. We are going to throw an session here. It's just to, to see how the process works uh, with the fault tolerance. Okay, let's go stop and restart. To see what happened. What is the idea of this demo? We are we, we want to see how the uh, the the, the job is try to say the element or, or try to, to reprocess a, a, an element that is failing. Okay. So here is the sound, the same import job. And let's go to the database to see what happened. Let's see the this case are only the element one and three, the position one and three were say, were written. Why? Because in the processor, we say, we say in the, is the position is number, is the second position. We are going to throw an exception. Let's see the logs to, to see how it works. Okay. In this case, the, the system, remember, we, we had a, a chunk of two. He tried to process in the two first pilot. And there is an exception for the second position, that is the one that we throw here. And he tried to process in again, the position one and position two. Again, the section. 
So now he tried to write only the position one and the position two, he skipped the position two, but that is the reason that, that, that we have only two records in our database. Okay, let's try to see here in the execution. Let's see. It's another table. It's execution. So here we can see the third element, there's a record uh, where red, seven web filter, I mean, seven was um, uh, written, and two record, two elements uh, were writing. Oh. Let's go back to the slide. I think Rodrigo, we are done and almost out of time. Yeah. Do you want something to add? Do you want to add another thing? I think ju just a couple of things to mention here. Um, I think when we introduce the, the processor, it's important. So the processor, if we return no from the processor, it means that this record is going to be discarded, and that's pretty much what we were doing there. And you can you can go back and show the just the processor. See, so uh, if position greater than three, return no. So that's how it's gonna be discarded out of the box. Another thing that's important to mention is when an error happened during the write. So suppose we have a chunk of a hundred. Okay, so that means that's gonna read a hundred, then process the hundred, and then it's gonna commit a hundred elements. So when that happened, when that happened, you were committing a hundred elements. If one never happened when you're writing, it's gonna roll back this transaction and it's gonna do a commit one by one of the writers to identify what where the error is. So suppose we have a, a hundred, I ever happened, then it's gonna commit one by one by one by one uh, in this in this chunk. Uh, so that's important for you to to keep in mind once you're working with the chunk size. So that can be something that, that you can wait during, during uh, uh, your design. And I think one other thing that we, we did not show, but here having the code that you, you're gonna have access to the code is that uh, the Spring Batch provides uh, pretty much you can map a record. So our races are records and we can map this record uh, directly on uh, when using the JDBC connection. It's pretty much simple. If your record properties are the same as your, your DB columns, uh, it's gonna pretty much uh, map out of the box. You don't need to define your, your row mapper and anything like this. So that's uh, what I wanted to, to mention. Um, I don't know if you can put the, the, the deck again. Yes, Yes, I, I want to share here the... Perfect. Yep. So here is, um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Sorry, we cannot be in person. We would love to be in Barcelona with you. Uh, unfortunately, we could not. Uh, but questions, feel free to reach out to us on Twitter. Uh, the deck is available here on Spring, uh, speaker deck slash Graciano slash batch processing. And the codes on GitHub, GitHub slash Rodrigo Graciano slash batch demo. Again, feel free to reach out. Uh, I would like to thank you very much. Again, sorry we cannot be in person. We would love to be with you in Barcelona. Humor? Well, thank you, Rodrigo, to be here with me again. Thank you for everybody to, uh, to watch this session. And I hope in the future we can be there in person. Bye. Have a good one.